In this video, we're gonna take this cute little desk, give it a makeover and turn it into this. If you're interested to see how I do it, keep watching. This piece of furniture is a client commission. The client has given me the piece of furniture and then selected the colors and styles that they would like me to use to refinish this piece. To get started, I needed to strip the old varnish off the top of this table. I started off with my battery orbital sander, however, the varnish was quite thick and it was taking a long time. So I decided to swap over to my more heavy duty orbital sander and just plugged that in with the vacuum attachment. I swapped back to the battery orbital to sand off the edges just because it's a little bit easier on my wrists as it's not quite so heavy. Whenever I'm sanding, I always sand with three different grit strengths. I start off with an 80 grit, I then move to a 120 grit and I finish off with a 240 grit, no matter what sander it is that I'm using. Now that I've removed that top layer of varnish with the 80 grit, I'm swapping over to a 120 grit, putting that on my sander, going to give the whole piece a once over. While I have the 120 grit sandpaper on my sander, I usually do a scuff sand over the entire piece with this grit. This is just my preferred preference for a scuff sand when I'm using my orbital sander. You could also do this with the 240 grit as well, but I wouldn't recommend doing a scuff sand with an 80 grit because it can be a little bit too harsh. You can also just use a soft hand sand pad. That's what I'm using here on the front of these doors to get into all the hard to reach areas and also on the spindles on the legs. Here you can see up close what this scuff sanding is actually doing. It's just removing the top layer of varnish and roughing up the surface for the paint to stick. While I was doing this, the weather here in Ballarat took a turn for the worse and the rain started coming in on the angle towards where I was working. I decided to shut the garage door so the rain wouldn't get me, but this is going to make the next few videos a little bit darker. I grabbed out some degreaser and then started cleaning this entire piece. I'm just using my good old regular house sponge here and just wiping away all of that sanding dust that I just made with my scuff sand, but also removing any grime that may be on the piece, making sure to go over all of the little areas, even in between all of these little grooves in the spindles. I then removed all of the hinges and the hardware because I'm going to spray paint this piece and I don't want to get any paint on any of the hinges. I'm just using a drill to remove these a little bit easier, but you can easily do this with just a handheld screwdriver as well. If you're going to be using a sprayer or any can of spray paint, you need to make sure that you mask up really well and also protect any areas that you're going to keep as exposed timber. Here, I'm just using some cling wrap to protect this timber top along with some frog tape up against the edges. For my primer, I'm just using a can of spray paint to spray on the primer, mainly because I'm a little bit lazy and I like to use something that is a bit oil-based as opposed to a water-based, and I don't wanna put that into my spray gun because it's just a little bit harder to clean out. Usually I only use the spray gun if I am going to be using water-based products because it is much easier to clean out. So I'm just spraying my can of spray paint on all of the areas that I'm going to be painting. After applying the primer, it's going to become really obvious if you have any damage on the piece because this really showcases the damage. I'm just taking some wood filler and I'm now going to fill in all of the cracks. Once the wood filler has dried, you need to go back over and sand off the excess wood filler. You'll see here that I am using just a piece of hand sandpaper to sand off the excess wood filler. However, I actually sanded off a lot of the primer. This showed me that the primer didn't stick as well as I wanted it to. So I did another scuff sand of the entire piece and then I applied another coat of primer this is another oil-based primer, and I just wanted to put a second coat on to make sure it was ready for paint. I then started to spray on my first coat of paint. My client selected this beautiful blue-gray color. When spraying on my first coat of paint, I wanted to just do a really light coat. That's why you'll see that it is a little bit patchy in sections. Once I sprayed on that first coat, I then grabbed out my paintbrush and I wanted to go back over and make sure there was no little areas where the spray gun had missed with that first coat. There's a few areas that are really hard to reach with your spray gun, especially up underneath the piece. That's why it's really great to go over and apply a nice solid first coat over the entire 
piece and make sure you get any spots that you may have missed with your spray gun. Then it was time to apply the second coat. I did the exact same thing for the second coat, spraying everywhere that I possibly could with this second coat of paint. My first coat did actually have really good coverage, so I didn't need to worry too much about the coverage of this second coat. It's really just to give it a little bit more durability and make the paint a little bit fuller. I then needed to remove all of the cling wrap or plastic wrap, whatever you want to call it, from the top of this table so that I then had the raw exposed timber that I could start to work with. This is definitely one of my favorite parts because as you remove the masking tape, it starts to look like it's coming together. I grabbed all of the hinges and I applied the hinges back onto these doors so I could put the piece back together again. Once you finish the process with one door, you just repeat the process exactly the same on the other door. It really is super quick to just put these hinges back on and put the piece back together again. Before I applied the timber stain to the top, I just grabbed a piece of hand sandpaper and went along the timber line to sand off any paint bleed throughs. I grabbed out my first colour of timber stain and applied that to the entire piece. Now this particular colour I used first because it had a little bit of a yellow undertone and it had a bit of browns or warm colours in it. My client had given me a piece of floor that she wanted to try and match. Her idea was that she wanted to try and match the top of this timber table to a similar colour of her timber floors. Before I started working on the actual piece, I had a bit of a play around with just an off cut of timber, mixing a few different color timber stains together to try and get the color that she was after. I determined that I was going to use three different timber stains, the yellow one underneath, then this brown over the top and an even darker color over the top of that to try and get these colors to blend nicely and have a similar undertone as the piece she had given me to match. If you're a beginner and new to refinishing furniture and you would like to learn step by step in detail how to complete each of the stages of a furniture flip, I have an amazing online course that you can check out down in the description. Once I was satisfied with the color of the timber on top, I wanted to add a wax top coat to this piece. I don't very often use a wax, however, I found with this piece that it was going to suit nicely just to apply a white coat of a wax top coat with this microfiber cloth. But I didn't want to use the wax on the timber. I wanted to have something that was going to be a little bit more durable on the top of this piece. I grabbed out some clear polycrylic and I'm going to apply that to the edges with a paintbrush and then use a top coat sponge just to apply that over the entire piece. It was then time to install the new hardware that my client had selected. They selected the hardware and provided it to me to install after completion. But before I could be 100% complete, I needed to apply a second coat of the polycrylic onto this timber. This is then going to make it nice and durable and water resistant in case they put anything on the top that they would like to try and wipe off in the future. And here it is, the end result. My client is absolutely aesthetic. The handles, the colors, the timber, the paint, everything just goes so well together and it is going to suit perfectly in her new home that she is currently building. If you loved this video, it would really help me out if you could interact, hit like, and leave me a comment to help spread the message about how amazing refinished furniture is.